The meeting to order. Uh, thank you for attending today's um, school committee meeting. Today is Tuesday, June 6th. Um, please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, we have an award ceremony that is going to be taking place over in the auditorium. So uh, what we have done in the past is that we will um, make a motion to suspend the school committee meeting. And um, Madam Superintendent, how much time do you think we need to suspend for? I would say at least an hour, 15 minutes. So we will... Um, we will basically tell the public that we will suspend to approximately 8.15, 8.30. Um, and we will then readjourn and continue on with the rest of the school committee agenda. So can I have a motion to temporarily suspend this meeting until after the award ceremony? Motion to temporarily suspend this meeting until after the award ceremony. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, thank you. We will adjourn and then we will return back between 8.15 and 8.30. Thank you. We will start. If you could all please join me and stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you everyone. Unfortunately, Mayor Carpenter could not be here, so my name is Tom Minicello. I'm the vice chair of the school committee, and um, we are all so proud. My other fellow school committee members are here, and this is a wonderful night for all of us because this is um, so special for all of you to be receiving these awards tonight. Uh, Brockton has many things to be proud of, and the chief among those is our youth. Uh, those of you seated here tonight have excelled academically, artistically, athletically, and I congratulate you for your success. Uh, it's a night of celebration, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce the superintendent of schools, Kathleen Smith, who will join me, and the rest of the school committee in honoring you this evening. So, Superintendent Smith. Thank you, Mr. Minicello. This is a very busy, but a wonderful time of year for all of us to celebrate all that goes on with our students in the Brockton Public Schools. And when we look out, it isn't often that we have some of our very youngest students to some of our very oldest students, even our most recent graduates, where we graduated close to 1,000 students on Saturday from Brockton High School. And we are very, very proud of those achievements. Being your superintendent has been more than an honor because I do get to see everything from the students that win the spelling bees, to the science fairs, to the uh, history day fairs, to the athletics, to the arts, to the drama, to the music, and on and on the accolades that you receive with your talents and your special skills in the Brockton Public Schools. And there are so many people to thank. I wanna thank our students for all of their hard work, all of the time they put in, the studying, the practice that made a difference, and that's why you're sitting here today to all of the parents, to the grandparents, to the family members that supported your students through projects, through listening, through doing those spelling words on a Thursday night, preparing for your spelling test on a Friday from the time they were very little, to spending time reading, to throwing a ball, to uh, speaking with your students and giving them opportunities for art classes and music classes and all the wonderful things you do. And when I look out there to those teachers in the classroom, that believe in your children. They believe in them from the time they're very little till we talk about those graduates that walked across that field on Saturday. They're there for you as good listeners, they're there for guidance, and they are truly the people that you will remember for a lifetime that supported you and brought you to this position. So thank you to everybody in our community for coming together and honoring our wonderful students. I also wanna give a quick shout out 
to our administrative assistants, our communication director, and so many of you that spent hours preparing certificates and getting this ready. And last but not least, I want to thank and I want you to give a round of applause to your school committee who represents you not just on a Tuesday night during very lengthy school committee meetings, but are out there advocating for you, they're your representative, and they make sure that we are a city where education excellence is one of the most important things we do for our children. So please thank them. So the first group of awards tonight is the Math and Science Awards for grades six through eight. They will be presented by Joan Farrington, our coordinator of Math and Science uh, grades six through eight. And I want you to please hold your applause until the last student in each category has received their award. And please be sure to turn off your cell phones and let's all enjoy this wonderful evening. Thank you, Superintendent Smith and members of the school committee. It gives me great pleasure to be here tonight to present these awards to the math and science students. And it's great to see so many parents here supporting their students in all their academic endeavors. So I think if we could have the students come over and start lining up over here, please, by row. The group that I'm going to call up first are the winners of the New England Math League competition. These students take a test somewhere around March, and they take a test that comp is composed of 35 questions that they have to complete in about 30 minutes. They're not easy math questions, they're not just regular computation, they're ones where students really have to think and understand the math. This year, we've had many of our students do an excellent job on these tests, and our first group is the group from Plouffe. It's a grade six group, and their team, consisting of five, five members, sometimes we have six because we have ties, but we had a total score of 111 points from these students. The members of that team are Nagazi Nuosi, please come up, Ali Jean-Baptiste, <laughs> If you could just wait until we finish each grade level, I'd appreciate that, thank you. Anthony Reiser. Mackenzie Quinn. Ezekiel Lemure. And Daniel Martins. That's the grade six team from Plouffe. Great job. This year, the grade seven uh, winners, we had a team win first place, second place, and third place in Barnstable and Plymouth counties. The grade seven first place team from Plouffe, in addition to being the highest scoring in Plymouth counties, they also had the top scorers individually. So I will read those names as well when the students come up. So in the grade seven team from Plouffe, we have Jacob Hayden, an individual score of 29 overall. Excellent job, Jason, uh, Jacob. Next, we have Alyssa Morales, individual score of 29 points. Again, excellent job. Next, we have Alexis Waugh, third place overall score of 25 points. Vinnie Wynn, also 25 points as a high scorer. And our last member of that team is Madison Henry. Thank you very much. The second place grade seven team comes from Ashfield with a total score of 110 points. The first member is Christian Nichols. Jelani DeJesus. Madeline Miller. Aaron Putt, Ryan Wallen, 
and Katherine Green. That's the Asheville team with 110 points overall. Good job. And we also had the third place team from Brockton this year. They came from East Middle School with a total score of 104 points. We have Brandon Honrado, Savannah Fonts, <laughs> Olivia Scott Andrade, just in time, <laughs> Jaylene Gomes, Isaac Miller, and Kylie Rexton. Great job with our seventh grade teams. The final New England Math League winners are from grade eight. We had the second place team from Plouffe Academy with a total score of 91 points. So I think you can see with these point values, the eighth grade test was a lot more difficult. So we have in that team from Plouffe, Kimberly Garcia, Michael Johnson, Calvin Vo, Sadie Ripple, Kyle Rodriguez, Jaden Tristan Francois. And our final grade eight team from North Middle School is the third place team in Barnesville and Plymouth Counties. The members of that team are Gianni Nunes Amato, Amos, I'm sorry, Amos Darius, Joshua Vega, Kaylaine Souza Silva, and Jacob Teo. And when I say these names, I remember several of these from last year and the year before. Many of them won awards last year in grade seven and the prior year in grade six. Excellent job in the grade eight group. The next group of awards is the science awards, are the science awards students who have attended multiple science fairs throughout the school year. They began creating their projects or deciding on their projects back in November probably. They did some research, decided what they were going to do their projects on, had a science fair at their buildings first, then they went to the city fair in, I think it was the end of March. They moved on to the regional fair in April and finally concluded last Saturday at the state science fair. So we have several winners on that as well. The first students I'm going to call up received honorable mention at the Regional Science Fair. First, we have Margaret LaPointe from Ashfield with her project on the effect of trumpet quality and proper maintenance on beginning players. Next, Ellen Arustamayan from Pluff. Her project was on cell phone mic microscope. Next is Angeli Texera and Sadie Ripple from Pluff with their project on the Ripple Project. And they also received honorable mention at the State Science Fair. Nice job, girls. Caitlin Donovan and Eliani Abraham from Pluff on Acid Rain. Jason Gillis Jr. from Pluff on reducing the spread of infectious diseases on airplanes, something we all might want to look into. Uh, he also received honorable mention at the State Science Fair. Great job, Jason. Allie Winkler from Pluff, the science of sound, also received honorable mention at the State Science Fair. Great job, Allie. Evelyn Murphy and Gabriella Florio from West Middle School with the project Different Aqueous Solutions. The next student who received a third place at the Regional Science Fair, I don't think she's here tonight, Sophia Howe from Plouffe with her project on project, protecting marble 
and our final science fair winner, Farzana Haig, who received honorable mention at the State Science Fair. She's from Plouffe Academy, and her project was The Effect of Drainage Systems. So congratulations to all these students. They all did a wonderful job. And now it is my privilege to introduce Dr. Ethan Cancel, who will present the awards for students who achieved perfect scores on the MCAS and PARC assessments. How about that? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for turning out, for recognizing our students. I want to thank the mayor, our superintendent, Kathy Smith, and our school committee for honoring our students, for accomplishing something that's really, really special. I just want to pause for a minute so I can underscore how rare a perfect score on MCAS or Park is. There are literally hundreds of thousands of students across the state who take the test. A very tiny percentage, a very tiny percentage get a perfect score. The students in Brockton tonight are being recognized for receiving a perfect score either in ELA or math or science and in a couple cases, more than one subject. So without further ado, Please hold your applause, but let's uh, recognize the following students for the perfect score in English language arts. Starting off in grade three, Jada Evora. This was for last year's park scores. Uh, Devon East Scott was not able to be here. Ella Silverman wasn't able to be here. Jane Liu wasn't able to be here. Melody Rivas wasn't able to be here, but Hannah Zuckerman is here. Ronique Brown. Madison Henry. <laughs> Katerina Lutz. Layla Motamed. Zyra Piers. Olivia Scott Andrade. Emily Ta, Sophia Howe, Rachel Moyes, Heather Corto, Brianna Joseph, oh yes, we, Emily Ta, come on up. is Emily Ta. All right, so Joshua Lovering, Stacy Polina Mendonca, Genevieve Noe, Max Tobin, and Rickson Zhang. Now representing the math, we have Aiden Hughes. Oh, you don't have to run, Aiden. You'll get it. Michael Lasavita. Jocelyn Protentis. Xavier Rendon. Anna Strapinis. Eileen Zhang. Inobong Anoko. Elizabeth Bernadin. Andy Diaz Perez. Hannah Camara. Kylie Lakin, Vivian Luo, 
Kimberly Matthew. <laughs> Gabriel Mesfin Champagne. Chrisander Parizon. Francis Perdall. Kiara Shields. Adriano Correa, Brady Witt, Alex Dos Santos, Julia Drukas, Vinny Hyun, Renee Long, Alexis Waugh, Daniel White. So those, those uh, students had perfect scores in math. And so now the uh, students with perfect scores in science, we have Ashley Fan, Douglas Vantran, and Calvin Vuong. Now, I want to uh, point out the next student, Owen Kirchok. He had a perfect score in science and ELA. Quite an accomplishment. We had an exceptionally strong third grade class last year. This year is fourth grade. We had three students who had a perfect score in the ELA and the math. Now there might be a little confusion about this. They took Park and I'm saying that they had a perfect MCAS score. The state converted the scores for us so that we could compare them. These are the scores they would have achieved had they taken MCAS, which, although it was the hardest test in all the states, the park test was even harder. So anyhow, without further ado, we have perfect score in ELA and math, Lauren Holland. Franklin Chen, and Emily Lay. So now it is with my very great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Julian Andrade, who will be handing out the next awards. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. Each spring, students in grades three to eight in all Brockton public schools, private schools, and parochial schools square off in the Little Red Schoolhouse Association annual spelling bee. Each contestant has won a grade-wide spelling bee to represent their school, and the winners of that citywide bee are awarded prizes from local sponsors. We are pleased with the excellent performance of our young spellers this year. I am happy to announce the first place winners of each grade's spelling competition. Here are the 2017 Elementary Citywide Spelling Bee winners. Grade three, first place, Ailish Lavelle Brookfield School. Grade four, first place, Rowana Hardy, Trinity Catholic Academy. Grade five, first place, Ulder Fernandez, Huntington School. And now, it's my privilege to introduce Eileen McQuaid, ELA and Social Studies Coordinator, who will present the awards for the Little Red Schoolhouse Spelling Bee and National History Day Awards for Middle School. Thank you, Dr. Andrade. 
Uh, this year the spelling bee was uh, a lot of fun and um, I would like to uh, introduce the first uh, place winner for grade six. And before I do, I just want you to know that the grade six kids went through 74 words before um, we finally crowned a winner. So the, the winner for the grade six spelling bee is Allie John Baptiste Jr. <laughs> Allie's from Pluff Academy. Our grade seven winner from Pluff Academy is Isabella McNutt. And our grade eight winner from West Middle School is Evelyn Murphy. The next awards are for National History Day. National History Day is a unique opportunity for our students to showcase their historical and research skills in their schools, in their region, at the state and the national levels. We are so proud of Brockton Middle School students who represented their city so well. I'd like to thank the teachers who participated and worked so hard to make the program such a great success and who have nurtured these students in their growing abilities. It's my pleasure to present to you the distinguished junior winners of the Regional National History Day Competition 2017. First place for junior individual website category with the Project 1989 protest at Tiananmen Square from West Middle School is Evelyn Murphy. <laughs> Second place for the junior group website, The Flame of Resistance from Pluff Academy, Abigail Schultz and Shay McCauley. Third place for the junior group website, the subject is Alice Paul from West Middle School, Jasmine Lee, Regina Chu, Nia Alves, and Paige Parma. Honorable mention for the junior group website category, and the subject was Deborah Sampson taking a bullet for women's rights from Pluff Academy, Nick Blanchard, Robert Latora Torres, Ryan Sannon, and Kenneth Young. Second place for junior individual performance. The subject was Neville Chamberlain's appeasement of Adolf Hitler. And this group, this person's from West Middle School. It's Gabriella Florio. <laughs> Second place for the junior individual performance, A Stand Against Slavery, A Tale of Two Spies from Pluff Academy, Allie Winkler and Nicole Dungberry. Honorable mention, junior individual exhibit, Turning Tides, West Middle School, Carolyn Gardner. <laughs> Second place, junior group exhibit, The Black Panthers from Pluff Academy, Corinne Bellevue, Chinure Okareke, Audrea Braham. <laughs> First place for junior individual documentary, Frederick Douglass from Pluff Academy, Georgina Younes. <laughs> Second place, junior individual documentary, Sophie Scholl, A Stand Against Hitler, West Middle School, Kate Remy. First place, junior group documentary, French Revolution, West Middle School, Rakeem Johnson, Kyle Gildner, Kenny Oliveira, and Cassidy Dickinson. <laughs> and 
And third place, junior group documentary, The War on Poverty from West Middle School, Gianna DeVoe, Zoe McDonald, Emma Reardon, and Alyssa Kerrigan. But the junior division is not done yet. This year, the middle schools have a lot to crow about concerning National History Day. Six of our students were winners at the state competition, and they will be competing at the national level in Washington, D.C. next week. This is an unprecedented number of students representing Brockton nationally, and we couldn't be prouder. Please join me in recognizing these amazing young history scholars. At the state level, they won second place in the junior division for group exhibits. The title was The Black Panthers and Their Stand for Justice. Corinne Bellevue, Chinyeri Okereke, and Audrey Abram. They're from Pluff Academy. Woohoo! So great. And their teacher is Matt Kowalik, has worked really hard for them. We're so proud of them. Good luck next week, you guys. Next in the junior division for group performances, this group won second place for their performance called A Stand Against Slavery, A Tale of Two Spies. They're from Pluff Academy. Their teacher is Matt Kowalik, and they are Allie Winkler and Nicole Dunbarry. Good luck next week. <laughs> and the junior division, individual documentary. This young lady won second place uh, for her documentary, Sophie Skoll, A Stand Against Hitler. She's from West Middle School, and her teacher is Matt Campbell, and her name is Kate Remy. <laughs> We're so proud of all of them, and we know that they're going to make us really proud in D.C. next week. So it is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Emily Flores, Social Studies Department Head for Grades 9 through 12, to announce the winners of the Senior Division of National History Day. Good evening, everyone. Each year, thousands of students across the country take part in National History Day, which, challenge, which challenges students to become experts in a historical topic of their choice. Students in grades 7 through 12, as, as you've just seen, competed in the paper, performance, documentary, website, and exhibit categories, sharing their knowledge and analysis of historical events before a panel of educators who judged their presentations, knowledge, and research abilities. These year's winners were Loving versus Virginia, Alicia Judy, Sojourner Truth, Taking a Stand Against Captivity, Mariah Brown, The Greensboro Four, Adande Bien Amy, Milari Teo Najera, Ruth B. Ginsburg, Nicole Mejia, Tori Viola Laffrey, The Black Panthers, Jelena Rochford, Sabrina Sepulveda, Abigail Simon. Individual websites, Astor Place Riots, Chinere Okoro, Toussaint Louverture, Tanisha Jean, Hitler, Standing Up for the Motherland, Eddie Cronin, Jesse Owens, Alicia Ovide. Group websites, Muhammad Ali, Joshua Miranda, Daniel Andrade, Margarita Martins. Protesting Vietnam, Yuri Da Silva, Jason De Cruz, Kevin Souza. Cuban Embargo, JFK to Obama, Tyler Kelly, Diego Ramos Pierre. Individual Documentaries, John Copley's Artistic Fight Against the British, John Gitundu. And Group Documentaries, The Escobar Files, Steve Murphy Takes a Stand, Maite Conde, Jada Vitale, Stephanie Alves, Sasha Scarpate, Sydney Parier, Gabriella Edwards, Alsara Francois, Hugh Thompson and the Milai Massacre, Naila Monteiro, Zaini Demanche Silva.
Congratulations, ladies. Now please welcome Foreign Language Department Head, Rachel Umbriana, who will present the National Latin Awards. Good evening. Latin students at North, South, and West Middle Schools, as well as Brockton High School, participated this year in the National Latin Exam. This exam is given each March to approximately 148,000 students worldwide. Students from all 50 states participate, as well as 13 foreign countries. This year, Brockton Latin students participated in the exam in five different levels. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the students for their participation in the exam and to thank the teachers for all their hard work to prepare our students to succeed. The Foreign Language Department is very proud of each of you. From Brockton High School, we have Catherine Healy, Latin One, Magna Cum Laude. Dale Quimby, Latin Three, Magna Cum Laude. From North Middle School, we have Samira Coban, Magna Cum Laude. Amos Darius, Gold Summa Cum Laude. Jessica Gross, Magna Cum Laude. Isaiah Jean-Pierre, magna cum laude. Diana Moreno, magna cum laude. Kayla Powell Cobbs, magna cum laude. And Joshua Vega, silver maxima cum laude. From South Middle School, Evelyn Canavan, magna cum laude. Bryce Collymore, cum laude. Shane Crow, cum laude. Michaela Cunha, magna cum laude. John Dodona III, magna cum laude. Stephanie Depina, cum laude. Vladnira Depina, gold summa cum laude. Brady Harkins, Gold Summa Cum Laude. Scott Homer, Silver Maxima Cum Laude. Christina Nugent, Magna Cum Laude. And Naomi Payne, Magna Cum Laude. From West Middle School, we have Angel de Jesus, Cum Laude. Vanessa Garcia, Silver Maxima Cum Laude. Faduma Guled, Magna Cum Laude. Ola Jumobi Alori, Silver Maxima Cum Laude. Daniel Onekya, Gold Summa Cum Laude. Alexander Provenzano, Magna Cum Laude. Anthony Timus Alves, Silver Maxima Cum Laude. And now I give you music director, Vincent Macrina, who will present the Allstate Music Festival Awards and two special awards for students who earned a place in the National Choral Directors Association's National Honor Chair. Good evening. Each year, the Massachusetts Music Educators Association uh, All-State Music Conference held in Boston during the month of March. The All-State Music Conference showcases by auditions the best high school musicians throughout the state. This year, the following students were selected to represent Brockton High School with the following ensembles. Chorus, 
Olivia Armory, Macaulay Burse, Haley Deltano, Greg Duong, Jade Etienne, Angela Frazes, Jason Laurent, John Paul Verry, and Aaron Smith. This was planned. Chosen perform with the All-State Band, Brianna Muniz, Christopher Morales, and with the All-State Jazz Ensemble, Ryan Shaw. They were also very proud of two outstanding students chosen to perform with the American Choral Directors Association National Honor Choir, Michelle Garcia. And Karina Katsiopoulos. And now I'll give you Art Director Sarah Richards who will present the Arts Award. Good evening. Five Brockton High School student artists exhibited works in the fifth annual University of Massachusetts Dartmouth College of Visual and Performing Arts Merging Young Artists 2017 Invitational Exhibition. This exhibition recognizes the exceptional merit of high school art students from 34 high, schools, 34 high school art programs in Massachusetts. Uh, Valerie Dehonet, Nicole Gordon, Gabriella Serrano, Hector Hernandez, and Samantha Mayard won the overall Best in Show Dean's Award. We're very proud to have these five Brockton High School students represent our art program. Every year, the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild holds annual scholarship auditions for acting and set design. This year, at Brockton High School senior Anna Coots won an honorable mention for her set design concept for the play, No Exit. Marshall Delapy, also a Brockton High School senior, won first place with his monologue for Fences by August Wilson. The National Television Academy, a professional service organization dedicated to the advancement of the arts and science of television. Each year they nominate students for Emmys in a multitude of categories. This year, Shaylise Jefferson, a Brockton High School senior, was nominated in the High School Public Affairs Community Service category for her film, For Food Homeless Project. Shaylise Jefferson. And the Scholastic Art Awards. The Scholastic Art Awards are the nation's longest running, most prestigious and recognized program for creative teens in grades seven through 12. I'm proud to announce that Sander Cabral of North Middle School not only won a state gold key, but went on to win a national gold key for his self-portrait. And now I present to you Lieutenant Colonel Richard Clark to present the JRTC Awards. Thank you.
Good evening. We would like to recognize our top four cadets who have recently been selected as the cadet leaders for our Junior ROTC program for the remainder of this year and next. Junior ROTC is a character and leadership development program. It differs from most programs in the sense that cadet involvement is critical to its success. As such, our cadets are continually presented with leadership opportunities in which they can develop their interpersonal, problem-solving, decision-making, and communicative skills while simultaneously learning something about their own character. As the key leaders, these four will be given the enormous opportunity of leading and managing the program's administrative, operational, and logistical actions necessary to support school and community events. Not an easy feat since, on average, we have about 220-plus kids in the program for each semester. So, without further ado, their ranks and positions names are as follows. Cole Wyman, the Cadet Lieutenant Colonel and New Battalion Commander. You'll be seeing him again on the athletic side. Next person, Elia Andre Devora, Cadet Major and New Battalion Executive Officer. Next, we have Anthony Morales, Cadet Major and New Battalion Operations Officer. <laughs> Finally, we have Joaquim Pires de Andrade, commonly referred to as Jack. He's our Cadet Command Sergeant Major and New Battalion Command Sergeant Major. Good job. May I now introduce our Athletic Director, Mr. Kevin Cairo, who will present the All Scholastic Athletic Awards. Good evening. It is my honor to present to you the outstanding student athletes here at Brockton High School. These young women and men have demonstrated their skill on the playing field, but also scholastic excellence in their classrooms. These athletes have made us proud to be called the City of Champions, and I commend each of them. The following student athletes have earned all scholastic honors, either from the Brockton Enterprise or the Boston Globe. In our fall season in football, Kingsley Ijoju Dyke, Enterprise All Scholastic, Kayshawn Brown, Enterprise All Scholastic, Sean King Jr., Enterprise All Scholastic, and Pride Favors, Enterprise All Scholastic for football. Boys soccer, Rilton Cavallo, Cristiano Martins, Lucas Spinola. All right, we finally have somebody to come up. <clears throat> Boys cross country, Christopher McCaffrey, who you'll be seeing again. Nathan L. Shamey in golf. Girls cross country, Sancha Alexis. Girls volleyball, Dackenzie Marcellus and Gabriella Serrano. transitioning into our winter season. It kind of feels like it out there now. For boys basketball, Damage Taylor and Precious Oko. No show. Next girl I'd like to call up is an Enterprise All Scholastic, but she also scored her 1,000th career point here at Brockton High, Jelani Jackson. <laughs> also representing our girls basketball team, Alexandra Giannaros. Annalisa Fernandez and Jade Wint. Ice hockey, Zach Sylvia not here. Boys indoor track, Christopher McCaffrey. And the other members of the team I don't believe are here, um, but Christopher was part of a team that qualified for the National New Balance Invitational down in New York City and he will be going off to Stonehill College next year. So Chris, great season. Okay, the other members of that track team are Rudiano Ramos, Josue Dos Santos, Cedric Souffrant, and Hanson Bastia. In girls indoor track, and I see her coming up here, Sarah Remy was Enterprise All Scholastic, but also Division I State High Jump Champion. And Marie Elise is not here. She was also a member of our girls indoor track. 
Okay, we had quite a few members of our wrestling team make all scholastic, and they are Caleb Lamar, <laughs> Cole Wyman, who is the only person in Brockton High School history to be the two-time All-State Wrestling Champ, and we're hoping for a three-peat next year. Connor Gagney. Dalton Roderick. And Devin Wynn. And last but not least, representative of our swim team, Caroline Golding, and a prize all scholastic. <laughs> okay, as far as our spring season goes, they just ended last week, and the all-star nominations will not take place until June 13th. Three of our teams, the baseball, boys tennis, and boys volleyball team, all qualified for the state tournament, and several of our track and field athletes qualified for the all-state track meet at Bridgewater State. So we won't have those until later on this summer, so look for the papers. But a big thank you to our students, coaches, parents, administration, and community for supporting our athletes throughout the year. We greatly appreciate all your support and can't wait to see you in the fall. Thank you. Okay, everyone, well, thank you for attending. We, everyone here on stage is so very proud of everyone that received awards. Some of um, our students, as you could see, received multiple awards and are so talented. Um, I'd like to thank all the parents and friends and relatives for attending. And um, I'm sure that uh, you are as proud of all of your students out here as we are. So thank you so much. Have a safe night and try to stay dry. Thanks again, bye-bye. Okay, good evening everyone. We will, um, can we have a motion to recommence the school committee meeting from our adjournment? Motion to recommence school committee meeting. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Great. All right, thank you for attending tonight's meeting. We had the um, privilege of having award night over in the auditorium, so we temporarily suspended. And it um, was, again, a, another nice night because you see how many students um, are really high achievers in all aspects of, um, of all aspects of what the school system has to offer in terms of academics, the arts, and sports. Um, so it's really a special evening. So I'd like to just congratulate all those students and their families. Um, the next item that we have on our agenda is the hearing of visitors. Uh, no one has signed in this evening, so we can uh, move onward. Uh, the the third item that we address is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the bundling of routine matters with respect to the school committee and at this time there's an opportunity for any member to remove a particular item for further discussion and consideration. So I would ask the school committee if anyone would like to remove any items in the consent agenda. Okay, seeing none. Can I have a motion from someone to, improve, uh, to approve the items within the consent agenda? A through M. Okay, wonderful. A second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Wonderful. Uh, next item on the agenda is communication and the report of the superintendent of schools. Superintendent Smith, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Mr. Minicello, you just mentioned that we had many students from um, our elementary schools to our middle schools to our high schools receiving awards tonight in every area, from our science fairs to uh, our National History Day, our athletes, our art awards, our music awards, uh, our JROTC, uh, our perfect scores on MCAS Park exams. Uh, it is just, I think, rewarding to every one of us here to understand why we continue to do what we do is to advocate to make sure our kids have every opportunity and they continue to amaze us with everything that they achieve. So congratulations to all those students and those families uh, for our end of the year uh, awards uh, 
ceremony. And I mentioned in there, and I want to mention here, I'm looking out at our interns uh, who are coming to quickly uh, the end of their internship. They have truly been an amazing group. They have been at so many things. Uh, and helping out tonight is Yeoman's work. It's a lot to put that together. I want to thank our communications director, Michelle Bolton, for working you know, with our team and making this a wonderful night for everybody. So thank you very much. Um, going into our uh, budget. As I told everybody uh, at previous meetings, we are in a phase right now of starting to build back. So the build back phase is to start to wait for uh, the possibility of additional monies as our state budget is finalized. Uh, we'll continue to build that. I believe our next finance committee meeting will be before our school committee. Oh, excuse me, we don't have school committee the 13th. It will be our finance committee meeting next week. I know a couple of uh, you were asking about that. At that point, uh, we hope to have some additional funds, some that you put away. Uh, we continue to look for those funds as we're able to build our budget. And this is where, again, our priority or your priority is to bring back our teaching positions as quickly as we can to support our classrooms. Um, I will mention to everybody that we do have on Friday evening, and yes, it is Friday evening at this point, our budget hearing before the city council, which is a yearly event that we go through to discuss our budgets. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about this year, we are the 11th on the agenda. Um, it's usually a quite a lengthy presentation, and I just want to talk a little bit about what the presentation will be this year. The pre presentation will start out with uh, a handout to what we call the state of the schools. So that is an update for them of every one of our operations. It's some of the challenges that they face, some of the achievements that they've had, but it really does give them an overall picture of the schools, and we do this every year. We've done this at least the past three years. We also will have an overview of what a $16 million deficit looks like and how we got there. We'll talk about loss of positions. And when I talk about loss of positions, we will make sure that they understand loud and clear, school by school, the positions that we will do without at this point in time next year. We'll talk about programs, the loss of programs. And some of them, when you look at our middle schools with all of the additional programs that we try to have for kids in this community, because before we start to talk about other funds in the community for other operations, if you're not making sure that your children are not receiving an excellent education and an opportunity for a safe space after school with caring adults, which is our promise, under America's promise and our promise as a city, to make sure we continue to provide these opportunities. So I think it'll be glaring when we start to talk about program-wise the things that we're missing. I'll also talk about advocacy, and I'm asking everyone out there that cares about education in Brockton. What I say to everybody is you demand educational excellence of us, which is why I started out by talking about not only our students' successes, but we support our struggling students. We support those students that need an alternative education, to the point that we had 1,000 graduates on the field last Saturday at Brockton High School. And that is the job that we need to do for the children in the city. So we had our rally last week. I'll talk a little bit about that. But this is our, this year, not just Brockton Kids Count, it's Save Our Schools Brockton Kids Count. And we're asking everybody. We're asking our teachers. We're asking our support staff. We're asking our parents and our community members to join us on Friday evening at quarter of six at the City Hall Plaza. Believe it or not, the weather looks pretty good. To come out for about 45 minutes as our city council members are entering the chamber and to make sure that they understand, all our elected officials understand, that unless we provide an appropriate education for our students in this city, the city as a whole will suffer. So once again, I'm asking everybody to come out. That is uh, the 9th of June and that is quarter of six on Friday evening for about 45 minutes. If you can give up 45 minutes of your time, I think it'll be time well spent. As far as um, this evening, we also had what we called, and I was so excited to finally have a facility master plan update. So you heard the company, uh, Arrowhead, Arrowhead, is that correct? Street. Arrow Street, thank you. Arrow Street present to us this evening. They have been working with us since last February, and I'd like to ask Deputy Superintendent Thomas to come up and, and just talk to us about uh, what lies ahead, some of the work that has been done, uh, so that we can uh, share with the public 
uh, what is happening uh, looking at the, uh, all of our school buildings in the district. As they presented you, to you tonight, they've had meetings with principals, they've visited our schools. Um, this is part of the group that is looking at both the city buildings and the schools. Um, as you know, the city council voted to accept um, the bid by this company back probably in March to start their work. Uh, might have been a little bit earlier than that, maybe back in January, to do a facilities master plan for the entire city, all city buildings, including schools. And this is something that the uh, superintendent has been asking for once she took office. Um, so it's um, something that's long overdue and will help us uh, with our applications to the MSBA when we move forward on either putting in for renovations for older schools or looking into building uh, newer schools, um, you really need to have this faci facilities master plan. Uh, the MSBA wants you to s submit that with what they call statement of interests uh, when you ask them to either build a school or, or renovate a school. So, uh, so they obviously evaluate your current buildings to see where you are. Uh, if you need more space, if buildings need to either be renovated, um, if they need to be added to, um, obviously, we know that a main focus of this group is Brockton High School, um, now 45 years old and, um, you know, is held up very well, but is in need of renovation and upgrading and um, of the infrastructure of the school. So um, it's a big task, but they've um, actually think that they've been off on, on a really good start. They've, um, they've met with us um, at Central. They've met with principals. They've put together some really good focus groups of teachers, administrators, to really see what they need in um, the day-to-day -day operations of schools and classrooms. So they have really put the focus on the teacher and what's needed in the, at the, you know, the classroom level um, as far as the learning environment. So I think um, so far they've done a really nice job and I'm looking forward to the final product. They are planning on having meetings with the community um, in the fall, they'll be planning those with us. Um, we want them to meet, probably do the old four compass schools, have meetings on each side of the city. Um, so it gives everybody an opportunity to come in and hear their presentation, also give their input on uh, you know, what they expect from our schools and how they can more, you know, better serve the community. So I know you asked them a lot of questions, but I can answer any that, um, that you want to ask. Um, it really brought to light the deficiencies, you know, the uh, geographic issues and areas of uh, increased population that need to be um, thinned out, basically, and, um, you know, brought to light the, um, you know, the flaws, no, you know, no blame to anyone, but just the flaws of, of overcrowding that we need to deal with, and it certainly puts in motion um, the first steps, you know, which are, are solid steps, you know, that need to be addressed in order to come up with a long-term solution. Um, you know, I think their priorities, based on the feedback from people that provided input, uh, were right on point. Uh, the high school being uh, uh, certainly a priority. It's, um, as we all know, the high school is really one of the most used buildings in the city. It's constantly being used for something. Um, so, you know, it's basically a 1970s building that needs some TLC and updating. And, um, you know, that's certainly one point that needs to be made. And, um, you know, certainly the um, overcrowding of certain buildings and the lack of square footage and space for kids to spread their wings and, um, specialty um, rooms and areas in order to uh, provide students with uh, the needs that other communities are able to provide based on, you know, their more, um, more updated uh, facilities. Uh, you know, we do have, you know, we're lucky to have a few uh, handful of new schools and those are beautiful buildings and those are beautiful schools, but we certainly go from one end of the gamut to the other. I mean, um, so, um, it's a good first step, and um, I, I was very impressed with the, the competency of the consultants. They're excellent, and yeah. um, I think um, many of us were here. I think uh, we heard loud and clear and saw <coughs> for ourselves 
points of interest and sort of cont internal contention that exists in the system. So, um, um, you know, we will obviously uh, take this as a first step and, and move forward to improve the district in a long-term fashion. Mr. D'Agostino. Deputy Superintendent Thomas, you and I have talked about uh, this quite a bit about how these kinds of things get paid for and all of that. And I'm just thinking maybe for the benefit of someone who might watch, be watching this meeting and wondering, okay, you have a $16 million deficit. We've got teachers laid off. How do we pay? How are we possibly paying for renovations potentially? How are we even considering this? If you can kind of just for the benefit of anyone who may not know how that kind of stuff gets paid for. It's all, it's called the capital money, capital repair money um, has to come out of the city's budget. Um, it cannot come out of chapter 70 spending. Um, and the good thing about um, Brockton is we do get 80% reimbursement from the MSBA. So they pay 80% of the bill. Um, and they've done that over, you know, Mr. Sullivan goes back to seven years ago with Mr. Minicello. And again, this about two years ago, this committee approved the, the latest round so we've we've had now 13 projects in my seven years of with the msba of putting i mean you know back in 2010 when i came into this job we had the raymond and and davis were be, they were threatened into close both of those buildings at the time there there was water coming in everywhere um, we had the north auditor auditorium which um, the roof collapsed and had to be shut down um, so we had, we had buildings in pretty bad shape then, and over the last seven years, the MSBA has taken on, um, has given us 13 new roofs, new windows, boilers, um, in you know 14 different buildings. So, um, and again, at 80% reimbursement, uh, supported by the school committee, but then again by the city, uh, and the city has been able to take that out of their local budget for capital repair. Um, the, fir the first project, the city, it, was, uh, this, it cost the city 13 million. This last project is, Aldo, it was about 3 million? The, si the, the latest cost? About 3, million. 3 million. So the city over the last seven years has, has put in about 16 million of their own money to, to do all these renovations. So moving forward, again, it, it's up to the city, the taxpayers, to, to foot the 20% of the bill um, that the MSBA expects you to pay. Um, and that has to be done through a, a, a series of votes. The MSBA has to, you, say you put in for a renovation of Broughton High. So first you have to go forward with an agreement to do a feasibility study. And that's an architect that comes in and evaluates the school, evaluates what has to be done. Um, so you have to pay that. And that's 80% reimbursement. And then they come back with a price tag and say it's going to cost you so many million to renovate the school and then you go back again and take another vote whether the city will support that or not but um, it does come out of city capital repair money and capital funds it cannot come out of chapter 70. Great thanks. And we, of course, have watched these projects go on all around us you know Stoughton is one of the newer ones building a new high school I believe Holbrook will finish within the past year or the next year uh, West Bridgewater finished uh, about a year or two ago so Abington, right, is uh, in the process of building. So you look at these, and towns are committing. And I thought it was interesting when I looked at the date that they had down there of the so-called Keith Center now. That's your old Brockton High School. It had a date of 1916. We know we opened this building up in 1970. So that had a life of 54 years as Brockton High School downtown. When you look at where we're at right now with this school, it opened up in 1970. We are at year 47. And you can bet the planning to build a new high school starts a number of years you know, before you're able to open up a new school. So just looking at that to me, you know, we are certainly where we need to be to be having these discussions about Brockton High. And I think we know we have a fabulous footprint here. And one of the things that we've been talking about with this group, and certainly before they came on board, is the possibility of adding on a large STEM wing and starting to renovate each of these buildings you know, over a certain period of time so you then have a state-of-the-art high school. So there's many options for us. Um, but as Mr. Thomas said, I, I for one, and I know many people join me, I'm thrilled that the um, 
city has put forward the money to do this facility master planning. I'm pleased in the fall we'll start to get some community input as to what do the grade level spans look like. You heard some of the recommendations from administrators, teachers, uh, principals who were on board during the months of uh, February, March, April to start to talk about this facility master plan. So we'll all have an opportunity to weigh in and to uh, decide what we want to provide for our children in the future. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Thomas. The, that group, Arrowhead, mentioned more than once the uh, pre-K. We're kind of missing the boat on it. Do you, do and, you, I don't know if you were here the whole time. Yeah, no, I, I, I listened to that part. And that's uh, it's important because if we, as we start to look at um, changing the, uh, the date for the kindergarten students, their start date, um, that will leave um, a lot of four-year-olds, you know, that would need to be into pre-K programs. Um, so we would need classroom space for those kids. So um, that's something that when, when we met um, with the group, uh, with the superintendent, um, she made it clear that we were looking at rolling back the, um, the start date for uh, kindergarten students. Um, and if that happens, we, we sh should have places for these kids that wouldn't make the date and they'd be pre-K um, where can we where can we house them so we would be looking for classroom space so we told them that would be a priority as part of their master plan um, to find us some classrooms that so we can expand the pre-k program um, so this is due to the facility master plan that we worked on in the last committee because I remember when the superintendent came on we had a facility master plan and we were talking about it at the time okay yeah, the yeah the city had to put out a bid, uh, okay. and at the time the city made a decision that you know they have um, obviously their police station, their fire stations are not in the best shape. So um, the mayor thought it was best to put forward a master plan that not only covered the schools but also covered all the city buildings. So they put a bid out um, to hire a facilities master plan firm that does all the planning. Um, and you met, you know, obviously you met them tonight. And that was the, the Arrow Street was the company that won the bid. And again, I think they started back in January. Um, and this is the group, they have another group that, uh, that, are, that is working on the city buildings. This is the group that has been working with the schools, with us in the schools. Thank you. You're welcome. So thank you, Mr. Thomas. Uh, and I, I think what I'll do is jump into um, the discussion about this past week. Uh, we did have on June 1st, the Commissioner of um, Early Childhood, Commissioner Tom Weber, come to our district. We were very pleased to host him. And the conversation very much was about a planning grant that we had gotten a PEG grant, a preschool expansion grant. Um, uh, also uh, a planning grant for our community for preschool. So we shared with him what we had shared with you at the retreat in January. We talked about the objectives for preschoolers and the objectives for kindergartners that are very different. We talked about we are only probably three in the state that have a December 31st cutoff. So we told him we're very much studying it. Right now we're looking at the results at the end of the year. When you talk about retentions or children that are struggling, you know, many times this is the population that we're talking about. So the goal of that conversation was some of the frustration on our part that there are pilot programs out there for places like Boston, Springfield, Worcester, who again are numbers one, two, three in size in the state. Brockton is number four. So we had an excellent conversation with the commissioner. I think he was very impressed with the work of uh, June Saber McGuire's team in our teaching and learning and our kindergartners and the work we've done on looking at the preschool objectives. And uh, to uh, Laurie Silver and Joni Block, who are heading up working with the community to take a look at what we have in the community and start to have conversation about rolling back that kindergarten age and talking about bringing on preschool programs. So I'm very hopeful that as grants come up, there were actually, uh, there was money right now in the um, state budget. And again, we'll wait to see when the budget is completed, probably towards the end of June, uh, what kind of opportunities there may be for us there. And I'd like to uh, invite up our principal Natalie Pohl from the George School. She's going to talk to you this evening uh, about uniforms, school uniforms. 
And I think this comes at the right time. Uh, last week we had conversations, lengthy conversations about dress code. And when it becomes, you know, warm weather, not that we have that right now, but, you know, warm weather, that's usually when the dress code comes into play many times. Um, so again, uh, I'm really pleased to have her here. And I want to remind everybody that back, oh my goodness, probably at least five or six years ago, the Huntington School was the first school to bring on uniforms. It has been a success. I've talked to parents, they're very pleased. Uh, when you go to the Huntington, the kids are all wearing not only the uniforms, but their logo shirts. They have many different options. Um, two years ago, I believe, we went with the Raymond School. Uh, during their uh, expansion grant, they were able to also bring uniforms on board with their red uh, shirts and their logo and their khakis. And uh, I think the George School at this point wants to present to you an option for the George School. Yes. Principal? All right, I have a, a PowerPoint. Sorry if that's in your eyes there. <laughs> so um, school uniform, as you know, I, this is my second year as a uh, principal at the George School. Um, school uniforms wasn't something that was, um, you know, top uh, on my priority coming in. But one of the first um, PTA meetings that we had at the school, um, we had a, a large group of parents, and um, when it was time for kind of questions and answers with the principal, the new principal, they wanted to know about school uniforms and how we could um, bring those to the George School. Um, so I was very taken aback by that, that we had this strong showing of support for school uniforms at PTA. And last year I promised the parents that, um, that we would do a uh, school uniform survey and um, kind of gauge uh, the support from our staff and our families and, and to see where we were at. Um, so in School Improvement Council last year, we developed um, a survey and we asked um, some questions um, such as school uniforms reduce distractions and increase student focus in the classroom, uh, school uniforms improve academics, and they had to rate, you know, um, strongly agree, agree. School uniforms improve student self-confidence, school uniforms improve school spirit and teamwork, implementing a school uniform policy would be financially beneficial for my family, and our last question was, I would support a school uniform policy at the George School. So we developed that survey uh, last year and um, didn't quite get it finished in time. So we um, sent that out at the beginning of this school year. And here, I'm sorry, that's a little light. Um, but here it is broken up by question. Uh, and you can see strongly disagree is on the left, all the way over to strongly agree on the right. Um, so we gathered that survey result, and a big thank you to our to our office staff um, for tallying everything. And Miss Zachary, who is our instructional resource specialist, she's here tonight, <laughs> compiling all the data uh, and putting that together for us. Um, we brought the survey results back to School Improvement Council and also back uh, to our PTA, and um, we really felt like there was a strong um, support. Uh, for school uniforms at the George. So in our school improvement council, we decided that um, we would, you know, obviously we had been talking to the Huntington and the Raymond. Um, we talked a little bit more with them and find out, found out how they rolled it out. And we were going to do something very similar to what the Raymond did a couple of years ago. Uh, and what we're going to do is try an optional policy, what we're calling a transition year for next year, where uniforms would be highly encouraged, um, but not required. And that would give us some time to gather more input and feedback from our families, from our staff, and really see if we do have the buy-in um, that our survey suggests. So we reached out to um, the same vendor that um, the Raymond School is using. Um, we decided to go, our, our school color is blue, um, and we decided to go with the navy blue, very similar to the Huntington, um, because we wanted to be, uh, wanted to pick a color that um, parents could buy anywhere. Um, Kmart, Target, Walmart, wherever they wanna go, um, we wanted to make it pretty standard and easily accessible. So it would be same thing as the, as the Huntington and the Raymond, a collared um, navy blue shirt um, with khaki pants, shorts, or skirts. Um, the girls with the tights, um, you know, white or navy tights. Um, they can buy it anywhere. Um, 
on physical education days, we'll also offer um, you know navy blue sweatpants or shorts and t-shirts um, on those physical education days. Um, but the other part that we're really excited about is we are going to offer a full line of what we're calling spirit wear um, with our George School Jaguar logo on it. Um, and families can shop um, right online for that. And let me see if it'll take us to the, oh, I don't know if I want to go to the website yet. <laughs> um, so families can shop right online. Um, we're planning right now a fashion show at the end of the year. Um, where we'll have some students kind of modeling the different spirit wear combinations. We're going to invite our families to come to that. Uh, then the vendor will come back during the school day, that last week of school. Um, they'll have some clothing on hand that per parents can purchase right there at the school, or they can just get the information to order online. Um, but again, they don't have to order um, the school spirit wear um, through the website. They can just get navy um, collared shirts and khaki bottoms anywhere. Uh, and again, it's not mandatory, but just highly encouraged um, for the next uh, school year. And that is our logo. So that will be on all of our shirts and on the, um, uh, the girls jumper and things like that. There will also be a section on the website for, um, uh, for parents uh, and staff if they want to purchase things. Um, there will be a whole section of different spirit wear items like backpacks and water bottles and things like that. And everything is um, really affordable. Um, I can take you back to the website, but the um, uh, price for a polo shirt is like $9 with our uh, George School logo on it. So everything's, um, you know, very um, reasonable. <coughs> so any questions that you might have? Yes? I just have a comment. Um, I work in a school that has uniforms. And mm -hmm. One of the things that I've noticed is that um, it really levels the playing field for some students. Mm -hmm. We have a high homeless population. And when I find out some students in my school are homeless, I'm very surprised because they always have their uniform on. Mm -hmm. um, and going back to my days as a student, we could tell who was having economic hardships by the way that they dressed. Um, so that's a really big piece for me when I see something like this come up. I'm very happy that you guys took the initiative for this. Uh, I've heard a lot from parents outside okay. of the George School that okay. really would like to have uniforms and other BPS schools, so right. it's nice to see this happening. That was it. a lot of the parents made those same um, statements to me, and uh, the beginning of this school year, they they were right out there on the front front sidewalk. You know, Mrs. Paul, what about school uniforms? First thing in the school year. Um, so I'm excited to see um, you know what what uh, support we have for this going forward. Thank you. parents, however, that were not in support of mm -hmm. this. One question I have, how many parents participated in your survey? We had uh, about 400 um, responses back. You got 400? Mm -hmm. And how many students were in the school? Oh, we have um, 891. Okay. Okay. Because that was a question, really, how many people actually participated in the survey mm -hmm. to kind of judge, really, the sure. accuracy of it. Sure. I like that you're saying you're doing a test year. I think that's kind of um, mm -hmm. a fair way. Another concern that was addressed to me, so if a student cannot afford a uniform, some of our students, they might have hand-me-downs. They might get their clothing from other sources other than going to the store and purchasing mm -hmm. them. What, how do we help them? Well, I talked a little bit about um, Principal McGrath at the Raymond School as well, um, and I know that she works very closely with her PTA. Um, they have clothing, clothing items at the school, um, and I know that they um, you know, do support families that um, have a need. Um, so we plan on doing that as well, um, and I've talked about it um, with our PTA. So um, we do that with families all the time um, that have any need, whether it's clothing, winter coats, shoes, backpacks, um, we get our families what they need. So we would work with our PTA to do that. So there's not a particular number, you don't have really a, um, like a, a number of uniforms you give to children that maybe do receive um, services or free or reduced lunch, there's not really a certain number of uniforms they may receive? I don't have any particular number in my in my mind, um, but you know, just thinking about the number of families that we support um, throughout the holiday season and and things like that, um, you know, any family that expresses a need, um, we make sure that they're taken care of. So we would do the same with school uniforms. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I just want to say I'm glad that you you know did the poll because I think parent buy-in is key on this. Mm -hmm. I've you know, this topic has come up in um, 
other schools there where there wasn't buy-in and they wanted no part of it. So um, that's probably the most important element of making this a success. Um, but and I applaud that you're already thinking of how you will address those that have e an economic issue and mm -hmm. with getting the uniforms. I know that I've gotten calls about that. You know, we talked about the Huntington has uniforms, and you know that's in my ward. And um, you know, I've reached out to the principal there, and we've been able to work things out. So I think you know, to your concern, I've had those exact calls and worked with the principal and found a way to make it work and. You know, I think we've always been able to, to get it done. But um, so anyway, that's my two cents. Well, I just wanted to say uh, it was about a year and a half ago when Carol McGrath was first starting the uniforms at the Raymond. Mm -hmm. And she said when the program started, it stopped all the bullying, the minor bullying, and the major bullying at the school. It was, to me, I thought it was a perfect idea that if all the kids look the same, there is no, there is no we picking on each kid. It was a perfect idea. And I just I wanted to applaud you because I, th I think you and your school would be perfect for it. And I would support it 100%. Thank you. Thank you. We are excited to take a look at that. That was another uh, thing that Principal McGrath had highlighted at one of our meetings uh, this year was the decrease in office referrals and suspension rates. Um, so we're very interested in, in evaluating that as part of our data for this coming school year. Nice job, thank you. Thank you. Are you Mrs. Sullivan, no? why don't we take a vote to support the George School Initiative in its current form? Someone make the, you, Mr. Sullivan, I'd love it if you'd make a motion. I'd like to mo make the motion that we support the George School in its initiative to start with uniforms this particular year. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Any opposed? There's always one. That's okay. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, and the website is on, uh, hopefully you have it in your packet so you can go on and take a look at the actual website. They're just starting to build it now, but you can get a sense of um, what's on there. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, also uh, on here tonight, we have the approval of our uh, school committee summer meeting dates. Uh, the two dates we have are Tuesday, July 11th, and Tuesday, August 15th. I'm sorry? Okay, I don't have a calendar with me. We usually have one meeting each month. Okay, I mean, that's fine. Um, would people like to do it um, August 8th or August 22nd? I'm away the 22nd. All right, so why don't we do it August 8th? How's that? Good? Okay. Is that okay with you, Madam Superintendent? That's fine with me. Okay. So we have July 11th and August 8th. That'll work. Um, can someone make that motion? Someone second, please. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And items to refer to subcommittee? Um, we have a follow-up to our uh, policy subcommittee. It's our policy manual review subcommittee. So we need to set a date for that. Uh, and the other one that we'd like to set a date for is the superintendent contract which is the review of the superintendent's evaluation and setting the goals, most importantly, as we go into the next school year. So during the summer months, those would be my recommendations. We did talk about a retreat, and we might be able to um, at least get that in during the retreat date that we came up with. So I'd like Olive Wan to reach out to you. We had talked about in the evening, possibly instead of the Saturday, which we've done uh, at other times and we'll come up with some dates and do a poll to see what dates are available. And preferably, I would think, uh, earlier in July as opposed to later in July if we can get that done. Okay, great. Um, 
And the last thing I have, uh, just to talk about a couple of things, and I know many of you will want to because we've had so many wonderful things happening, so I'll just be very quick with this. Um, today, uh, up at Brockton High School, this happens as soon as we graduate our students, our class of 2017. Today, what we did was honor our upcoming seniors, our class of 2018, and we gave out our book awards. Uh, 11 of our students received book awards to Dartmouth College, to Harvard University, uh, to uh, BC, to many wonderful colleges. So congratulations to every one of them. I also had the opportunity, it's really an event I look forward to each and every year. It's West Middle School uh, Ladies Tea. And we do this for the seventh graders. Um, ladies, if you have an opportunity, invite, I invite everybody to come to this. Um, it talks about uh, women and leadership and, and grace and doing all the things that women do so well. So we truly have a tea. The girls all get dressed up. There are some student speakers. Of course, the best speaker was a student that had graduated from West Junior High at the time, graduated in 2012 from Brockton High School. And it, so obviously, Mr. Gormley, is that, oh, she mentioned you actually. In a speech? She said oh, Mr. Gormley. <laughs> I thought it was your dad. No, it was I, she absolutely talked about Mr. Gormley. So that's, could, I'm sorry, her name is escaping. Cheyenne that's exactly who it was. And it was just, and the kids loved it. And they love it when somebody young comes and talks their language. Uh, you could hear a pin drop, and it was just a wonderful event. Uh, thank you to our teachers at West Middle School. Uh, Principal Murray is in the audience, and it was a great event. Uh, also, um, and I'll let all of you talk about the graduation, um, just a terrific day. We somehow escaped the rain, um, and from our student speakers to our graduates, you look out on that field, it is a dignified, beautiful event for family, for friends. Uh, it is just, uh, again, the highlight of the year. And I thank Principal Wolder and all her staff for putting that together for all of us to be proud of our high school, Brockton High School. And our alternative schools were represented, um, Frederick Douglass, um, the Champion High School, the Goddard School, and we're very proud of all of our graduates, totaling over 1,000. We also had our big event, um, Brockton Kids Count Save Our Schools, uh, the uh, Tuesday after Memorial Day. Very well attended. I want to thank all the parents that came out, uh, all our staff, uh, our supporters, and we will be talking advocacy uh, as we go forward, and certainly it'll be part of my presentation at the City Council meeting uh, on uh, Friday evening. Kennedy Commemoration Day. We had all of our elected officials there, um, our state delegation was there, Senator Brady was there. It was a beautiful day Friday. Um, all the families come out and again, continue to support our children who just perform performed wonderfully. Thank you to our principal, uh, Brian Rogan and all his staff. Um, and I'm going to finish with a happy birthday to our executive director, June Saber McGuire. So please join me in wishing her a one, and I'm so pleased she's at the school committee meeting this evening. You are. <laughs> Forever 39. That's right. And that's it. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Um, unfinished business. Nothing. New business. Um, I can I can report in on the um, policy meeting we had on June first. Um, the um, Committee of a Whole met on June 1st uh, to review the uh, policy manual as well as uh, the handbooks at the different levels at, throughout the district. With respect to um, the policy um, manual, we had a um, presentation from Dr. Tarasi uh, with um, input from our intern, Melissa Costello. Uh, they did a wonderful job um, of going through the handbook. Um, I think Dr. Kinsell also contributed to that as well. And um, at, that, uh, at the first part, half of the meeting, we basically went over the caregiver authorization form and we did adopt a change uh, to page one of that form. Uh, we then went on to review the handbooks and Mr. Thomas um, 
made some recommendations with the input of, I think, everyone in the room as well as the school committee with regard to some of the dress code policies. That was, I could tell you, a very interesting conversation uh, with regard to some of the items. But um, we, um, we came up with what we believe are some common sense changes to uh, some of the dress codes at uh, the middle school level. Um, so I would say that is a summary of what went on that evening. Uh, Joyce, you're looking at me strange. Um, you, you weren't at that meeting, so that's why you're like, no. yeah, so, okay. Oh, all right, so um, that is in a nutshell. Yeah, that is in a nutshell what took place that evening. Uh, so can I have someone make a motion to approve the report of policy that evening? Motion to approve the report of the policy subcommittee meeting. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, all in favor, seeing none, all in favor. Any opposed? Okay. Um, then I think we need to just make a specific motion uh, to adopt the change to the caregiver authorization with regard to the recommendations to page one as presented by Dr. Tarasi. Um, can I have a motion on that? Motion to adopt the changes to the caregiver authorization page one as recommended by Dr. Tarasi. Okay, second, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Gormley giving me the smirk. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then um, with regard to the dress code, Mr. Thomas, do we need to adopt the dress code change? No, you yeah. just have to approve it. Okay, so, all right, very good. So, um, we, uh, again, there was further discussion with regard to some changes to the dress code as incorporated into the handbook. Um, did we make change? Yeah, we did make a change to the BHS dress code as well. So, yes. um, all right, so a motion to adopt the middle school and BHS dress code changes as presented uh, um, at the policy subcommittee meeting. Motion to adopt dress code changes? Thank you. Middle school and high school. Perfect. Seconded. Mr. Sullivan seconded. Any further discussion? They're in our packets. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Are you opposed? Okay. And one abstention. Oh, two abstentions. Okay, two abstentions. All right, very good. Two abstentions. Five in favor. Good? Yes, you, you got the, you, so you adopt the middle and the high school, the changes, the whole but handbook. all of the other Oh, it needs to be the entire handbook? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. All right, so can we amend that motion then to include the changes to the entire handbook at the, at the high school level and the middle school level? All of them, all of the alternative schools, all of the handbooks. Okay. Okay. So we amend the motion to say we adopt the changes to the middle school and high school yearbooks. All of the handbooks, handbooks district-wide handbooks. And all the handbooks, handbooks yeah. we're accepting. Okay. Um, there's a point of clarification for myself. We're adopting the Molly as well as the, the changes we discussed will be at the elementary level. Of, I mean, this is everything. Correct. Right. There were some changes that were made when the attorney reviews them each year and changes the updates to the law, some of the wording. And we, we looked particularly at some of the dress code uh, concerns that you had brought up. Right, right. So, but the overall handbooks for all of the district, um, from again, from our elementary all the way through every one of our alternative schools, middle, high school, all the district handbooks. Can you second that, Mr. Sullivan? All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, you had more discussion? I just want to say, I want to clarify that the reason I'm stating is because I did not think we were going to have more conversation about the handbooks. Um, so that's why I'm stating for the record. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is that I think the 
Thank you for clarification. All in favor? Mr. Diagostino, next. Go ahead. Just real quick, for those who maybe have some more concerns, when will the uh, handbooks go into print? Do we have a, a ballpark of when that? Okay, so if there were those who wanted to present other changes or have any other discussion, there is still time if, if something had to be, something was found that the committee felt strongly about I would, correcting. I would be to the next meeting. Okay. So the next meeting is June 20th. One more meeting that, right, and I, I, for those that are abstaining for various reasons, I just wanted to see if they had another opportunity to present whatever concerns they might have um, before it goes to print, because obviously once it goes to print, I mean, we're, we're, it's, that's it. So, okay. And it's important that we have that for the first day of school. For Absolutely. The yeah. Okay. Right, right. I just mean if they wanted to bring something up at another meeting, I'm not saying that we shouldn't take the vote tonight, but for the two of them, if they saw something that was really, they really felt strongly needed to be discussed, there is another meeting at which they could have us take that issue under advisement. That's, I was just looking for a timeline, yeah, that's could, all. We could start working on translations and if we had some minor changes on the 20th, we could work with that. Okay, all right, I was just curious. Anyone else? Clarification, since I wasn't able to attend the meeting, um, I was just curious, middle school, I thought, Jeans were not allowed at all currently at the middle school, but now we're going backwards allowing them. Rip jeans were <laughs> allowed at the middle school, I believe. They had I to wear something under it if uh, yeah. that was how it previously yeah. had been. Because my thing is, is, I mean, high school they can't, but we're allowed. I mean, they're going to transition into the high school anyways. Why not just make these should mirror each other pretty much? Well, that's exactly that's what, what we did. did. That yeah, exactly that's what we did. They're yeah. going to the ripped jeans are only allowed if there's something underneath them. Um, I think what was it above the knee? Thigh above, the, above, the, above the, knee. the knee. Yeah. But that's exactly what we did. We yeah. took a look at the language at the high school. We made uh, similar changes to the language at the middle schools. Um, we added something about the strap uh, would be two inches. Um, so we, we, and that was again for both middle and high school. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we did. Because number six on the um, handbook for middle school does not mirror the high school. High school, no rip jeans. Right, so the change hasn't changes. been made yet. Yeah. Well, this, I'm only looking at what was provided in my packet. So I apologize. But. I'll make sure that All right. I don't think Friday had all of the changes. The language. I thought it did too. Maybe we didn't look at it closely enough. Oh. All right. Well, there's one more meeting that you can take another perusal, and then if there's something that needs to be rectified, amended, or Sometimes changed, we can do that on the 20th. <laughs> okay? No. No, absolutely not. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, Mr. Sullivan. Just one item, if I could. Sure. Well, we have a motion on that. We still have our motion on the table. Can we finish this motion and then we can talk about the graduation? Yeah. Okay. So, is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, and two abstentions, correct? Okay. Mr. Sullivan, the floor is yours on the graduation. I just wanted to talk briefly on the graduation. Everybody here was there Saturday. But the way it went it was so fine-tuned. I wanted to take my hats off to the superintendent, the deputy superintendent, all the girls that handed out the diplomas, the security, everything seemed to be A1, everything moved like a clock was perfect. I don't know how you held out the rain, well, but you did. I, well, I'd like to take credit for the rain, but credit for what happened certainly is Principal Sharon Wolder and her staff. Deputy uh, Mike Thomas is there with our facility staff, so they, I, I concur with you, Mr. Sullivan. It just moves I around was, like a clock. I thought it was, it was an unbelievable. excellent day. I was very impressed with it. But it was a lot of hard work. I'm oh, well, you said that. it's a lot it was of a lot of hard work and well done by everybody. 
Thank you. I concur. Good job. Mr. D'Agostino. Uh, again, also on the, on the graduation, again, just, I mean, every detail was perfect. And, and, and the students were manning a lot of the um, uh, responsibilities you know, and, and to see them just, I mean, literally, I can't think of anything that didn't go like clockwork, absolute perfection. It was, it was, it was great. Um, and also congratulations, of course, to all of the graduates. Um, I have to say, you know, nights like tonight where we go to that awards ceremony and absolutely on graduation day, being able to hand out diplomas and shake hands of, of our seniors and, you know, commend them for, you know, their, all their hard work is, has to be absolutely my favorite part of being on this committee is, is to be able to have that opportunity to, to you know, express congratulations for, the, for all that they've done and kind of you know, honor their work for, that they've put in. So. Ms. Plant. I'd like to say I had um, parents with graduates in other towns ask how we do it in the amount of time we do it. And um, because we're not sitting there for you know hours and hours, it's it's reasonable. Our students' behavior was excellent. I was lots of smiles, great handshakes, hugs, even. Um, I just we had such great students there, big smiles, so polite, so respectful. And I would like to congratulate Ms. Wolder for for that as well. Yep, our student speakers were wonderful. I thought this, oh, I thought yeah. the speech was excellent. Um, I certainly thought the opening um, chorus was phenomenal as well. The, the music was excellent. Um, and they loved it. The students, the students loved it. Classes. The music was excellent. And the style of music was wonderful. You know? So um, just a class, uh, just a class uh, graduation, class act. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Congratulations to all those students. I think, believe it or not, a lot of them are going to miss Brockton High. You know. But like the mayor said, it's the first chapter in their life, and um, you know, onward and upwards, they have so much to look forward to, and we certainly congratulate them all and, and all of the um, staff throughout the district, you know, at elementary, middle, you know, and high school, who built the foundation for them to reach, you know, the pinnacle of graduation, and you know, it's just a wonderful time. Yeah. Oh yes, I do want to mention that we have an award winner with us, and she's sitting in the second row over there. One of our students, um, Ms. Plant's daughter, Kylie, right? That's right. Yeah. What was your her, what was your there were so many awards. What was your award, Kylie, tonight for? Um, I got a perfect score on math. Wow, <laughs> very impressive. Very impressive. So after the meeting, whatever snack you would like, you can take as much as you want home. So good job. Excellent. Good job. So um, anyone else? Mr. D'Agostino. Um, on that same topic, you know, last year I remember Mr. Minicello bringing up when we were talking about student awards that, that these things just don't happen, right? I mean, obviously you have to have the student who's dedicated and committed to their education but also you have to have the parents supporting them too and being behind them. And I'm trying to give you a compliment. I'm trying to give you a compliment. <laughs> and if it happens to make you cry, well, hey, sorry. But um, you know, certainly you know, she did the work, but she had your support to help her do it. So Thank you very much. you're welcome. Mr. Diagostino. Very nice touch. Very nice touch. I have my moments. Yes, you do. Oh, that's all right. You have more than you think. Um, anyone else? No? Okay. Is that it for this evening, Madam yes. Superintendent? All right. Someone, a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second? All right. Thank you for attending. Motion adjourned.